Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today I want to show you a really fun birthday card using some brand new stamps from Art Impressions. So this is the brand new Gull Friends set from Art Impressions and you get the coordinating dies with this as well. So that'll make it e really easy to cut out all these little images. And you can see you have these cute little pelicans with the gifts and balloons. You get some seashells. Uh, some extra seagulls. We're going to be using that little grouping of seagulls down at the bottom and we'll be using some of these other images which I'll show you as we go along. For paper I'm using the Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock. I've gone ahead and placed it in my mini Misty and for ink I'm using the Versafine Onyx black ink. This is a permanent black ink. So to color in the images, I'm using N75 and N95, and these are the Tombow dual brush pens. So they're a water-based marker, and they have a bullet tip on one end and a brush tip on the other. And for blending, I'm using my Tombow blender pen, which is N00. And I'm going to start with my lightest color of gray, and then I'll add the darker tone and just kind of pull that in towards the middle with this blender pen. And to clean off your blender pen, you just want to scribble it onto to some scrap paper until it goes clear, and then you'll know that it's clean to go to your next color. So I'll just continue coloring all of these in, and these little images are just so cute. I love this little grouping of seagulls. And later we'll be using a little cluster of seagulls that we're gonna put in the sky, and um, all the little sentiments that coordinate with this and they're really cute um it's one is says who can wish you the happiest of birthdays a pelican shake your tail feathers beach chicken gull friend ahoy there birthday gull which we're going to be using today gulls just want to have fun i love that and there's many more so now i've switched to 946 and 993 we're just going to color in their uh, their feet here and the beaks for each of these. So I'm just going to add a little bit of the lighter color. And then I did decide to bring in a little of that 905 just to give a little more shadow there at the base of the beaks. And I'll just pull that out towards the tips. And I did that for all of these. So now I'll take number 885 and color in this little beach floaty. I'm going to use red and blue here. I'm placing the color right around the edges and then I'll just pull it up and towards the towards the top there just to keep it kind of the lightest around the top edge. And then number 452 is the blue color I'm going to use and I'll do the same exact thing. And then number 985 I'm using for the pale and that's a yellow color, and I'm gonna put it down one side and then pull it over towards the left. I'll use a little bit of that here on the french fries. And then number 451 for the glasses, and 603 for this flip-flop. I'm putting it at the bottom and then pulling towards the top, but I didn't feel like there was enough shadow, so I'm coming in with 665, just to add a little bit more color there at the bottom. And I'll use that same 665 on this little bag. Now I've grabbed the coordinating dies and I'm just gonna snip these apart. And wait till you see all the detail this cuts out. This is really cute and fun the way it cuts it. Um, you'll get all the little areas in between the little uh, seagulls cut out as well. So I'm cutting this down a little bit so that I can run it through my Sizzix Sidekick machine. And here you can get a closer look at, look at all that detail. Cut around all the little feet and everything. Now with my oval double stitch dies from Art Impressions, I'm gonna grab that second largest one. Again, using the Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. And now let's do the water portion. So I've got this Hero Art set, and you see you start with the lightest, the mid color, and then the darkest color, and you're layering up these stamps one on top of another. So this is gonna give us a really fun water look. Now with Tumbled Glass, Broken China, and Blueprint Sketch, 
These are the mini distress inks. These are the regular inks from Tim Holtz, not the oxides, although you could certainly use those as well. I'm going to tape this oval down in my Hero Arts Mini Misty stamp positioner. And I just want to make sure that it's straight up and down. I always have a hard time with the ovals, just making sure that it's nice and straight. So I want to fuss around with that a little bit just to make sure I have it lined up. And then I'm starting with that solid image. So this one is going to be the lightest color. And again, I want to make sure I line it up straight. So just take a minute or two here. Just trying to figure out about where I want that water to be. So just take some time just to test that out. And now I can go ahead and pick up this stamp. Now, if you haven't used the stamp before, you could prep it a little bit just by running your hand, like the palm of your hand over the stamp a little bit, just to, just to take away some of that film that might be on top of the stamp. Now, I'm inking it up really well with that lightest color, and I'm going to do this about three or four times. Now, I wasn't too worried that it didn't completely, uh, solidly, make an impression because it is water so that I don't mind that there's a little white there but if if you do then just continue inking it up and stamping it until you get a solid image now I'm grabbing that second image and I'm using the medium tone and I'm going to ink that up again about three times just get this layered up nice so I get a nice contrast of color here So again, inking these up three or four times, and that's why it really helps to use your stamp positioner to do this. It just makes it really easy to stamp it multiple times. Now I'm grabbing that third image, the third layer, and we're going to use the darkest color now. So you do want to, again, make sure you have it lined up nice and straight. And this is the blueprint print sketch, so I'm going to go ahead and stamp this a couple of times as well. And now you can see this beautiful layered water we have. I just think this is so beautiful and so easy to do. But I did want to show you that I played around with a bunch of other inks because I wasn't sure this was the first time I was using this. So I wanted to see what some other combinations were going to look like before I chose this one. That's the one we did today. That's the three that we used just now. But the one at the top is Broken China, Mermaid Lagoon, and Chip Sapphire. And then the one at the bottom is Tumbled Glass, Peacock Feathers, and Faded Jeans. To be honest, I really liked all three of these, and I'm sure there's many more combinations you could do. But I did decide on that middle one there. And I'm going to keep this with the stamp so that I don't have to redo this if I ever want to make another card. I don't have to rethink it. Now let's go ahead and do the sand. We're using antique linen, gathered twigs, and ground espresso. Again, these are just the regular dye inks, the mini dye inks. And here I don't need to mask anything off because I want to go right up to that water. I want a little bit of an overlap there. That's where the water would touch the sand. So it's going to be the darkest there. And we want to make it look like the water is washing over that sand. So now I'll come in with the medium tone and I'll go just closer to that sand here. And then I'll come in with that darkest tone, the ground espresso, and just go right along that water line. And again, just letting a little bit of it go over to blend it out just a little bit there. Then I'll go back to that lightest color and blend this out. And that's going to make it look like the sand is a little more wet right where the water hits the sand. I'm adding a little bit more of that darker color. And you can keep doing this until you get the look that you like. So now let's go ahead and do the sky. Here I do want to mask this off. I want to protect that water area that we've already created. So I'm using some purple tape and I'm just going to go ahead and tape that down. Now I've got three colors here. I've got squeezed lemonade, wild honey, and abandoned coral. I'm going to start with that lightest one again. I always want to go light to dark. Just makes it a lot easier to do your blending. 
So I'll put that squeeze lemonade all the way around the top section here. Then with the wild honey, I'll come up maybe about three quarters of the way there. And then I'll add the abandoned coral just sort of right along that horizon line. And I'm just going in reverse order with my blenders and blending that out. And now you can go ahead and remove your purple tape. And I keep these for other projects, so I'm just going to wipe that down and attach it to my craft mat. Now, with this largest die from the Rectangle A2 double stitch dies from Art Impressions, again, I used some Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock and I ran that through. Gives you that nice stitched edge. Now I have the Tim Holtz stencil. This is called Splash. And I'm going to go ahead and tape this down with some purple tape just to make sure it doesn't move around here. I'm using that same purple tape we just used a minute ago. And now I'm going to start with two shades of blue. I'll use the tumbled glass first. And I'm going to apply that over the entire stencil. And you don't want to be real fussy. It doesn't have to be even because it is water. We're using this just as kind of a watery background. So we do want different shades here. That'll just add some texture to this. And we are going to come in with another shade of blue as well. So I'll again, I'm just going to apply that to the whole stencil. And I've lined this stencil up with the right hand side of my card. And now I'll come in with some broken china and just add some little areas of it here and there. Again, we just want to add some texture to these splashes. And then I'll just gently blend that out just a little bit. So again, I've placed that stencil on the right hand side of this cardstock. And don't worry about that left hand side. We're going to be covering that. So again, I'll clean off the purple tape and set it aside for another project. And you also want to clean off your stencils as well. So now with my Hero Arts wood grain fancy die, I'm going to grab another piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock and run that through the die cutting machine. And you really do want to put that on an angle when you run it through because it's a little bit harder to run through, but it'll be a lot easier if you place it on an angle. So you can see that when that die cuts, there are a few little areas that cut through a bit. So I usually like to grab an extra panel, same exact size, and I'll tape these two together. I'm using my ATG 700 to tape these together. And that'll just give a little more stability to that wood grain panel. And these will both measure four and a quarter by five and a half. But what I want to do is cut this down. So I'm going to cut this at the one and a half inch mark. So I'm just lining that up on my Tim Holtz paper trimmer. And I'm going to go ahead and cut that. Now using antique linen and the gather twigs again, I'm going to go ahead and just give this panel a little bit more of a wood grain look. So I'm going to apply that antique linen all over. And then with the gathered twigs, I'm just going to add some shadows here and there on the wood. And I'll add some of that color around all the edges as well. And then I'll go back and blend that out. I did think it was still a little bit too light, so I did come in with the ground espresso. And I'm going to add a little bit of a shadow around the edges here. This will just frame it a little bit better. And then I'm adding a little bit more to those corners. Now with the going back to the oval double stitch dies, I'm going to grab that largest one this time. Again, using some Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock, I'm just going to cut a little frame for this. 
I'll go ahead and use my Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive and I'll glue these two together. And you just want to center that. So now going back to my stamp set, I'm going to grab those that little cluster of seagulls. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp those up in the, in the sky there. And then I'll grab my sentiment as well. We can stamp both of these at the exact same time. So the sentiment says, Ahoy there, birthday gull. And we're going to center that right underneath these little seagulls or on the center of this oval. And again, just checking to see where everything needs to be here. You can go ahead and remove the seagulls. And I, I'm using the Versafine Onyx Black ink to stamp these. So now that that's all set, I've got a standard A2 top folding card, which measures four and a quarter by five and a half. So this panel is going to fit right on the front of our card. And I'm using the Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive to glue these two together. And then I'll use that same adhesive to glue down our little wood grain panel here. Now we can go ahead and attach the oval, but I thought I would pop that up a little bit. So I'm using the iCraft 3D foam squares. And I'll just place several of these around the back. I want to make sure that it sits up nice going through the mail. So I'm going to put plenty of little foam squares on the back of that. And then I'll just center it on my card. Now we can add the little seagulls. I'm using the Scotch foam mounting tape to attach these and again you want to use plenty of foam here just to make sure again that they they go through the mail really well and that will also add a little dimension here now I'm going to take that little ship's wheel and stamp that I'm using my small acrylic block from Hero Arts these are the the acrylic block trio and that little block is a one inch by one inch and I tend to reach the, for this a lot when I'm doing some of these tiny little images and it does have grid lines on it which also makes it really easy to use. So now I'm going to grab the die that I need to cut this out. It's just a little circle die here. I'll tape that down with some purple tape and again I'll run that through the Sizzix Sidekick machine. I'm going to add a little bit of that tumbled glass ink all the way around the edges just to kind of finish that off a little bit. And then we'll pop that up with a little bit of that same foam mounting tape. Now I wanted to add a little bit of sparkle and I'm using the Buttons Galore and More Sparklets Embellishments. These are the Ocean Waves collection and I'll add a little rhinestone. These all kind of have a little bit of a blue sparkle to them and then I'll add three little ones up here at the right on the top right hand side of the card. Again just for a little more texture and interest. So let's take a closer look at the card. And this little set, I love this set. I just think it's so cute. And we've created that really pretty ocean effect in the background. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to visit me at pinkwhisperdesigns.com. As always, thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.